So here at Lick Observatory, we have an experiment called Laser Guide Star Adaptive Optics, where we use a high power laser, not nearly as high powered as what HAL was operating. Uh, we only put up maybe three to five watts of la laser power typically, uh, but we use a laser to measure turbulence in the Earth's atmosphere, and then we correct for that turbulence in real time with a small optic, a small mirror that can change its shape a couple thousand times a second to put anti-turbulence on the mirror and clear up our images and achieve images sharper than the Hubble Space Telescope through our telescope. But the laser operations, of course, are fraught with uh, communications with the FAA and with U.S. Space Command as well, because some of our laser light, of course, goes right through the Earth's atmosphere into space. Uh, to work with the FAA, we communicate with them when we're planning to use our laser. We have a radar system mounted on the top of our telescope, so that as a backup system, in case our human plane spotters that are outside, you might see a little booth with a glass roof and windows, that's our plane spotter booth, and they have a big red kill button so they can shut off the laser for the safety of an incoming aircraft, and if something malfunctions, we have our radar system to act as a backup. Uh, and so we use the laser routinely. We also have people in space, and our laser could potentially damage the eyes of an astronaut or a downward-looking camera. So I also communicate with the Air Force Space Command and let them know what we're going to look at on any given night, and they'll tell us when we need to shut down our laser to make sure that we don't blind a satellite or an astronaut. So laser operations continue here at Lick Observatory, just in a little different way. Okay. I think, wasn't the uh, idea for that that came out of Lawrence Livermore Labs also? Well, the, the, the original idea for adaptive optics was actually from an astronomer, Horace Babcock, in the 1950s. It wasn't until the 1980s that the technology was good enough for it to work, and it was actually pioneered by the military. Uh, the Air Force was the world leader on uh, adaptive optics, and the astronomers eventually caught up uh, to, to do similar technologies, but the military designed it first. And I think uh, Shane, this telescope was the first one to actually use it, is that correct? So yeah, the Shane telescope is notable with adaptive optics because we pioneered the use of a sodium laser guide star uh, using a sodium uh, frequency laser to uh, do adaptive optics and make it useful for general astronomical science. So we were the first telescope in the world to be doing science with laser guide star adaptive optics, improving the technology and enabling other telescopes to do the same. And now all large telescopes in the world pretty much have laser guide star adaptive optic systems due in part to the work we did here at Lick Observatory. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you for sharing. Okay. Okay. Hey, Brian. <laughs>